Hi there, this is Serves Pro with the Dr. Vax channel. And today, we're going to learn some basics of Tinkercad so that we can design connectors for pop sticks. Okay, hold on and let's learn something together. In this lesson, I'm going to introduce Tinkercad some very basic concepts of Tinkercad, and we're going to talk about positioning objects. Then we'll learn what we've used to create a new object for our pop sticks. Pop sticks, as you may recall from some of the earlier videos, are models that we build, plastic components, connectors, in order to connect together popsicle sticks. They can be functional or they can be for fun. In this case, we're going to design a flower. Let's get started. To get started, you go to Tinkercad.com and you create an account. To create an account, you click on Start Tinkering. In our particular case, I've already created an account. It's really rather straightforward. I'm going to sign in. It's asking me for my username, for my password, And you'll see I have a number of new designs, designs already in here. Let's create a new design. We're going to click on create a new design. And you'll see the overall Tinkercad work plane. The work plane is where you build things. There's a palette of objects on the right. And there are a couple tools such as copy and paste on the left. And finally, on the left, there are options to zoom in, zoom out, and change perspective. We're going to leave this in the home view for right now and show you an example of dragging an object onto the screen. We can then drag another object onto the screen. We can stack objects on top of each other, in front of each other. And you'll notice it's sometimes hard to position an object in this view. So we can switch to a different view, such as a front view. Or we can switch to a side view. And we can always click on Home to go back to the Home view. In addition to placing objects on the screen, we can also place holes on the screen. Holes can be thought of as tools. So as an example, if I click on one of these corners, I can make this five by five, and we'll make this a very tall, long cylinder. Now I can position this cylinder on top of the rectangle. I can move to a different view. I can press on this arrow and press it down. I can move to a different view and make sure that it's actually in the center by looking at the different views. We can go back to the home view and now I have a rectangle with a hole on top of it. If I select the rectangle on the hole and I click on the group icon up here on the upper right, I now will have a rectangle with a hole. Now to see this better, I can press the right mouse button and move my work plane around. I can take and scroll on the scroll wheel and I do recommend that you use a three button mouse even if you're on a Mac. I can scroll on the scroll wheel to zoom in or out. I can press on the scroll wheel and move my object around. Now, if I go to my top view, if I double click on it, it will lay it flat. And I move this around, we'll see that it's changing in perspective as we move it around. Even though I'm looking at the top view, the perspective is changing. 
when I'm in perspective view, as an object is moved away from me, it gets smaller. There is another view that makes it easier to align objects in a flat view, such as a top view. And if I go over here to the left and say switch to orthographic view, it now makes everything basically flat. Now, even in orthographic view, I can look at it from an angle, but as I move it around, its angle will always stay the same. Why would I want to do that? I would want to do that because it makes it much easier. Let's actually make this a little bit bigger. It makes it much easier to align objects in this view. So if I wanted this circle to be exactly aligned with this circle, it would be easier to do in this flat view. Now, in order to align objects, I also can use the arrow keys. The amount that an object will move when you use the arrow keys is determined by the snap grid on the bottom right. I'm going to make that 0.1 millimeters. And now I can hold down the arrow keys and I can get this precisely aligned. If I take and select both objects, if they're physical objects and group them, we'll see this is now a single object. So what did we learn here? There are two views, orthogonal and perspective. In perspective view, as I move an object around, the angle I'm seeing it at changes and it becomes smaller as it moves further away. In orthogonal view, the object stays on the exact same angle, the exact same point of view. If I double click on my navigation on the top left, I can look at it completely flat. If I click on home, it goes back to a three dimensional view. Okay, we've now learned enough to draw a flower and to cut a hole in that flower for a popsicle stick so that we can end up with a pop stick flower. In order to build our flower, which has five petals, we need a way to align those around the center of the flower. So we're going to cheat a little bit. We're gonna use a polygon. So let's go over to our palette on the right we'll drag a polygon onto our surface. And on the right side with the polygon selected, we'll see it shows the number of sides. We're gonna change that to five, click once on the work plane outside of the object. That makes that go away. Now, a circle is in essence a flat cylinder. So let's drag a cylinder onto our work plane and we need to set the size of that cylinder. So if we made it 20 millimeters and we have some space in the middle, another 20, be a relatively large flower. I'm going to make this 15 millimeters by 15 millimeters. You'll notice when I click on the object and then click on a corner, I have the ability to change the two dimensions. Even though a cylinder is a circle, and normally in a CAD program, you'd define the radius to define the size. In our case, when you click on a corner, you define the two dimensions and the X and the Y, and we set those both to 15. So now let's position this about like that, where it's about halfway into our polygon. Now we can click on this and we can then click on duplicate. Now we have two. And we can put the next petal in place. We can click on duplicate. And let's put our next petal in place and let's move these out a little bit so that we can actually get these all to fit. 
we're going to duplicate, put the next one in place, and duplicate, and it's time to put the last one in place. So we're doing this more or less by eye. We want the center to be uniform. Let's see here. These are aligning just a little bit in. This one looks about right. This one needs to come out a little bit. So we've now arranged the petals of a flower. If I select all of the petals along with the center and click on group, we've now drawn a flower. Now, if we look at the flower here, you'll notice that the stick does not go into a petal. It goes into the back of the flower. So how do we do that? Well, we'll take another cylinder. Let's make this a little bit smaller. Let's say about 10 by 10. So we'll go 10 by 10. We're going to drag it into the center here. Now, in order to get it exactly in the center, we're going to use a new tool. Let me click on the outside flower. Let me hold down my shift key, click on the inside flower. They're now both selected. Now I'm going to go up to the right and click on align. And you'll see these dots are all the way around this combined object. When I hover over a dot, it will show me where it will move the circle. Well, I want to align it centered in this direction and centered in this direction. And now my circle is absolutely centered in the middle. Now, let's go to a home view and we can see our flower looks a little bit big. So let's actually change it so it's a little less tall. We'll click on this item here and we're going to make it five tall. But the center part is more than that right now. So what I'd like to actually do is hold on the top arrow here and drag it up. When it's at zero, it's aligned to the same work plane on the bottom but I want to use it to make a little indentation in my flower. Since my flower is five high, if I set this to three, and then I switch it to a hole, select both objects and group it, I now have a nice little dimple in the middle. Okay. Okay, now we want to add the dome on the bottom which we can use to insert a popsicle stick. So we're going to select our object, and then we're going to use a new function, select on flip in the upper right. And as I mouse over these different objects, you'll see how it will flip our object. We're going to flip it this way. And now if you'll see that if I zoom in here, the dimple is gone because we're looking at the back instead of the front. If I flip over to the other side, we can see the dimple again. But I just flipped my object upside down. So I'm going to go over to a empty space, click with the right left mouse button one time. And now we're going to go to find a half sphere. I will click this in here, drag it into the surface, click once on a corner, and make it 5 by 5. And it looks a little small. We'll make it 10 by 10. Now we're going to drag that into the center of our flower. We're going to hold shift down and select the flower also, so they're both selected. We're going to go to a line and make sure both of our center alignments are set. But that looks about right. Now for the final step, we need to put the popsicle stick in. 
So let's take and drag a box over. We'll go to top view to make it easy to manipulate. And our popsicle sticks are exactly um, 9.5 millimeters by, and we're going to drag up so we can see the height, by 2 millimeters. And we're going to make this a little bit longer so it's easier to work with. Click on top. And this would come in right over here. So we can see we made our dome a little bit too small. So let's go back to our dome and change that to 20 by 20. Now we're going to have to recenter it. Select them both, align, align, align. And we might as well group it together and glue that together now. And now we're going to take our popsicle stick and insert it so it's inserted into the dome. 9.5. Okay. And let's go to our home view so we can see this three-dimensionally. Select the flower also. Go to a line and we want it to be centered in this dimension and centered up and down in the dome. But since the dome was connected to the flower already, I'm not centering it up and down in the dome, I'm centering it up and down in the dome plus the flower. So let's unselect this, select just this, and go up to this view so we can see it. And we're going to nudge it up just a little bit so it just goes into the dome there. Now, if we want to see where it actually fits, we can select the flower and temporarily change it to a hole. And now you can see exactly where it's fitting inside. Let's go to a top view so it's flat, where it's fitting inside that flower. So we're going to select it again and make it go up a little higher, just like that. We're going to take the flower, make it a solid again, select everything on the page, group it, go back to our home position, and now we have a flower with a dimple in the front and a hole for the popsicle stick in the back. If we wanted to, we could select that one more time. We could go to flip, whoops, select it one more time select flip and we could flip it over and now we have our dimple on the front our dome on the back for the popsicle stick and we are all ready to print this out now in this particular case i put the stick in on an angle that's a little more advanced lesson that we'll get to later okay if this was helpful then please give this a thumbs up like this video subscribe, share this video with others, and be sure to leave me comments down below about ways that I could make it clear, other techniques you'd like to learn about. Thanks so much, and let's continue to learn things together.